Hello everyone. Uh, last class was about a couple of muscles. I've explained the nerve supply functions and movements of these muscles. And um, I've also explained the origin and insertion. Origin is where it comes from. And insertion is where it inserts, where it attaches. So basically every muscle has, a, has an origin and insertion. And we also call the middle part between the origin and insertion, we call it as a, we could say belly the fleshy part, the muscle part, and at the same time the insertion we could also call it as a tendon. So basically any muscle I speak about, we, it has an origin and insertion and uh, we have a nerve supply and a function. Now continuing this lecture, uh, we have the deltoid muscle. Deltoid muscle is a very well known muscle. It is the shoulder muscle. It's called deltoid because it's a triangular in shape and um, it's the lateral, uh, it starts at the lateral third of the clavicle, a chromium process, and the spine of the scapula. So let's say this is the clavicle, this is the chromium process, and this is the spine from behind. So it basically comes from here and attaches to a tuberosity in here, as I said in the osteology of the upper limb, called deltoid tuberosity. So this is about uh, the origin and insertion. It's supplied by the axillary nerve, and at the same time, we have three functions of this muscle. We have an, three parts, actually, which do three functions. The anterior part, the posterior part, and the middle part. So basically, if I do this movement, I'm flexing my arm. So this movement is flexion. The anterior part this move, does this movement, the flexion, and the posterior part does extension. And basically, this movement is a well-known movement called abduction from the middle part. So this is all about the deltoid muscle, all you have to know about it. And the next muscle is biceps brachii. Biceps is also a very well known muscle. Biceps is, has two heads, one long head and one short. Um, uh, the biceps bi means two and um, the long head goes through the intertubercle sulcus or groove. This is called intertubercle groove. So the biceps go the long head goes through this, and the short head attaches to the coracoid process. So, uh, this is about uh, the, the biceps, and at the same time, uh, it attaches, it inserts in the bicipital uh, aponeurosis. So, we have a deep fissure in here called bicipital aponeurosis, and it at the biceps attach over there and um, it's supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. So this is about it for the biceps. Now the next muscle, we have the brachialis. Brachialis, its origin is in the anterior distal half of the humerus. So this is the anterior, and this is the distal half. So this is the down part, away from the origin of the structure, distal. So it, it, uh, uh, it originates from here, and attaches to the coronoid process. So basically, this is the coronoid process, it comes out, so it comes from here, and attaches from here, and attaches to there, and the uh, main, main function is flexion, so when I do this movement, uh, the, the, bi the, the brachialis muscle contracts, and at the same time, the biceps also contract. Biceps also, I forgot to tell you, that it's a very strong supinator, so when you do this, you, you, your biceps contract. So this movement is done by the biceps brachialis and another muscle called coracobrachialis. So uh, the brachialis is also supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. Now the coracobrachialis, it attaches to the it insert it attaches originates to the coracoid process and attaches to the medial surface of the humerus. So um, it's supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve and does the movement of flexion. Now the next muscle, what I'm going to be talking about is the supraspinatus muscle. If Mr. Skull here would help me a little bit. We have the supraspinatus and we have the infraspinatus. So this is called supraspinatus muscle. The supraspinatus muscle attaches to the greater tubercle. So which is the greater tubercle? The bigger one. So this is the bigger one. So the supraspinatus attaches in here. And at the same time, it the supraspinatus, it abducts the hand, so it abducts the hand, first 15 degree is done by the supraspinatus. Your deltoid doesn't work first 15 degree, but later on you, your deltoid works. 
So this is a test to even check the supraspinatus if it's working or not, if we have a nerve injury. And at the same time, um, it's supplied by the sub subscapular nerve. And we have also the next muscle, which is infraspinatus, the done, the done part, down part. So this is called infraspinatus muscle. It's also supplied by the subscapular nerve. And we have the, mov the movement of the infraspinatus is lateral rotation of the arm. So when I do this movement, when I'm laterally rotating my arm, I'm um, doing the infraspin I'm contracting the infraspinatus muscle. Now we have the subscapularis. Subscapularis, what does sub mean? Sub means in the back. So the scapula is like this basically, and we always see that this is the front of the scapula, the back part. So basically this is this is the back part of the scapula. It's from the inside. We have a muscle called subscapularis. If we if we uh, reflect the serratus anterior. We can see the subscapularis under this under this muscle, and um, it attaches to the lesser tubercle. This is the lesser tubercle, and it's part of the rotator cuff muscles. I'm going to speak speak about this later on, and um, it's supplied by the upper and lower subscapular nerve, and it medially rotates the arm. So basically, subscapularis medially rotates the arm, and the next muscle will be teres major. Teres major. Uh, it attaches to the inferior angle of the scapula, so it in or it originates actually in the inferior angle angle of the scapula. So this is the scapula. We have this superior angle. We have the inferior angle. So basically, the teres the teres major comes from here and attaches to the humerus. It attaches to the medial lip. So where's the medial lip? This is the medial lip. It attaches to the medial lip of the intertubercle groove. So basically, it comes from the uh, from the inferior border of the scapula and attaches to the medial lip of the intertubercle groove. And um, we have teres major, and we have the oh, another muscle called teres minor. Now, about the teres major, it's, um, it's supplied by the lower subscapular nerve and does adduction and medial, rot medial rotation so it adducts, it puts your hand down and it medially rotates your hand now the next muscle will be teres minor so we have the bigger muscle teres major and the next muscle will be teres minor so this muscle uh, it's, it's uh, also in the lateral border of the scapula it originates in here but it's a little on top of the so teres major, let's say it comes from here and teres minor it comes a little above it, so uh, it uh, also attaches to the greater tubercle, and it's supplied by the axillary nerve. Now, knowing that it's supplied by the axillary nerve is very important. They mostly get these questions because they're very tricky about about what it's supplied with. Now, um, its function is it does lateral rotation of the hammer. So when you do this movement, you're also contracting your teres minor. Now we have the rotator cuff muscles. Um, Rotator cuff muscles are supplied by the, uh, are actually the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, anterior minor, and subscapularis. So these are four muscles. So if you put your finger like this, like this, uh, the four muscles will attach in the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle, or yeah. So the the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor attaching to the greater tubercle and the subscapularis attaching to the lesser tubercle so basically they hold the, the humerus from uh, let's say a dislocation or something so they make the humerus stronger, a stronger part so at the same time uh, we have a weak part of the humerus so uh, the least supported part of the humerus, where you could, where an injury could happen towards it, is the shoulder, is the uh, uh, the posterior part, posterior aspect, uh, because the rotator cuff muscles are not there, and the posterior aspect are not there to support the posterior aspect. They support the anterior, superior, and inferior aspect of the of the humerus. So basically, the posterior part of the humerus is the most part that could get injured and uh, it, it, you could have a dislocation uh, in the posterior part, not in the anterior or uh, superior or inferior part. So this will be about it for the 
for, for this lecture for the nerve supply. Next class will be about the forearm muscles and nerve, nerve uh, functions of the forearm muscles. I hope I made it easy for you. Study hard. Thank you very much.